Mixed reviews for Paul Johnson, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, knocking out the previews and predictions for all the Power 5 teams. We are smack dab in the middle of the ACC. We have delivered uh, previews and predictions for the entire Atlantic Division. We're in the Coastal with Georgia Tech. Please check out the videos from the Pac-12 and the Big 12, plus the summary videos in which we explain the standings and where we had some challenges making our decisions for the conference championship and conference championship game. All right, let's talk Georgia Tech football. Paul Johnson, is he doing a good job? Well, he's been there in Atlanta for quite a long time, and the recruiting rankings would speak to him really developing players and his teams playing past their talent. But on the other side, he's responsible for the recruiting, and he's smack dab in the middle of one of the best talent bases in the country for high school football, Atlanta, Georgia. All right, and the trajectory for Paul Johnson is going down. Not severely down, but it's... It's sloping in that direction because if you look at the beginning of his stay at Georgia Tech, that's where he placed most of his big bowl teams and ranked teams in the top 25. Recently, it's been a downward deal for Paul Johnson, although a roller coaster over the past few years and winning 11 in 2014, then three, then nine, then five. All right. Yes. Five and six, four and four in the ACC last year. It starts with his quarterback in Taquan Marshall. He's got to improve his passing, and we know that they don't pass it much at Georgia Tech, but they've got to keep the defenses honest. And beyond that, they've got to hit for the big plays because Georgia Tech completes passes for more yardage per pass completion than anybody in the country almost every year. Taquan Marshall completed 37% of his passes last year, 10 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. He ran for 1,146 yards and 17 touchdowns. So compare that to Justin Thomas, who had the two really good seasons at Georgia Tech, leading them to the Orange Bowl win in 2014, then two years later to a 9-4 season and a bowl victory over Kentucky. He completed 53% of his passes. That's a huge difference. So Taquan Marshall needs to increase the percentage by at least 10% this season. Curvante Benson has emerged as a top player, even with offensive line woes last season for Tech. He ran for 1,053 yards and seven touchdowns. The pass success rate of this team is never going to be great, but as we mentioned, they hit for big plays when they're humming at peak efficiency in playing off of the triple option. Number 87 in the country two years ago, they dropped all the way to dead last. Number 130 in the nation in success rate. These are the advanced metrics, according to SB Nation and Bill Conley. Explosive plays. They went from number three in the country. So again, the success rate's not going to be higher, the efficiency, but the explosive plays, as we mentioned, number three in the country two years ago, they dropped all the way to number 85. That's basically take on Marshall and the offensive line. So sophomore B-back uh, Jerry Howard did run for 7.6 yards per carry, but Taquan Marshall, adverse to pitching the ball, kept it way too much. Uh, the offensive line experience is decent coming back. Wide receiver Ricky June, again, you're not going to catch a lot of passes at Georgia Tech, but he made big plays, and he did catch, get this, 25 of the 43 pass completions for Georgia Tech last year went to Ricky June. So he's gone. They're going to replace him either with uh, one primary receiver, and if you look down through the years of Paul Johnson offenses, they typically throw the ball to one guy downfield, maybe two, usually one guy, like a Ricky June, 25 of 43 completions. This year is most likely going to be Brad Stewart or Jalen Camp. They're the candidates. Listen to these stats. Brad Stewart caught four passes last year for 100 yards, won a 60-yard touchdown against Virginia Tech. That's what they do. Jalen Camp caught one pass last year, but it was for 49 yards. Two years ago, Brad Stewart, very much more a part of the offense with 19 catches in 2016. Let's get to the defense. Ted Roof, longtime assistant to Paul Johnson, finally out at Georgia Tech. The defense, along with the overall scheme, with the overall look for Georgia Tech, has been moving in the wrong direction. Nate Woody comes in from Appalachian State, and his defenses have played aggressive. D. 
defensive end. Henry St. Armoire is back with five and a half tackles for loss as his Desmond Branch with three and a half stops behind the line of scrimmage. You got a couple senior linebackers in Victor Alexander and Brant Mitchell. They combined for 111 stops. Alexander's 60 tackles led the team last year. Five top defensive tacklers in the backfield, gone. They do have a four-star cornerback, and that means something at Georgia Tech. They don't recruit and sign a ton of four-stars, but they've got one in a Johnny Kerr, and he needs to be ready to play that number one corner spot. The special teams were awful in 2017. They do have one of the top punters in the nation, a freshman from last year, Presley Harvin, back. He averaged over 44 yards per kick. The non-conference is pretty rugged with, of course, the finale against Georgia on the road. They also have a date with South Florida in Week 2. All right, out of the Atlantic Division, they've got to play two of the better teams. Clemson, always on Georgia Tech's schedule. That's a, a severe disadvantage for the Yellow Jackets. And then they travel to Louisville as well. All right, the losses come against Georgia, Clemson, and Miami. For sure, they're losing those three games. They go to Virginia Tech. They go to Louisville. Those are most likely losses as well. That's where, what we're going to give Georgia Tech right there. Five losses. Clemson, Georgia, Miami for sure. Most likely Virginia Tech on the road and also Louisville on the road. Seven and five for Paul Johnson. A typical Paul Johnson season in Atlanta. Four and four in the ACC. That's my record. Want to hear from you and get your prediction down in the comments section also, subscribe to our newsletter by sending your email to MarkRogersTV at Gmail right here at MarkRogersTV, the voice of college football.